Welcome to another test and teardown video. This time it's an Italian product from Tico Telecom. It's called a repeater module model 44R3N. Whatever that is, I can't Google anything here. Uh, I believe this is a television channelizer. A channelizer is a thing that can take one channel and move its frequency range to another channel. So this, and then of course it can buffer and amplifier and filter this. And this way you can add all those uh, newly reassigned channels um, into a television network or a system where a lot of people live. And then you can uh, merge in more channels and all that kind of things. Um, it also says something about that here on this label. Frequency in channel 26. So that is uh, 547 megahertz, or is it 42? I can't remember what I wrote here. It's difficult to read. <laughs> Sorry about that. And then frequency channel out is 57. So that is 728 megahertz. Power. That's probably output power. Three watts. A minimum signal in and maximum signal input. And that is in milliwatts. And then there is a meter here that says level of the output RF. And uh, this is uh, output in Italian. Don't you just love uh, when somebody writes the stuff on the front here in their own language? Of course, it's quite uh, easy to understand that this is input. And this is output and this is input all right so it's it's not that difficult to learn uh, two new words right here's a here's a funny one see si, that means yes in italian right so that is yes so where the heck is no <laughs> i love it this one was left outside in the rain so as you can see it's completely corroded so i don't expect this to work uh, or anything like that i even had to drill the four uh, screws away to open this because it was just badly corroded you got those two the the, the those are actually plug-in modules so let's see the input converter consists of course a of a, an oscillator and mixers and all that kind of stuff and of course you can change this to the different uh, input frequencies and then you have the the output like a uh, like a new remodulator for the output frequency band and uh, we also got the output amplifiers see they also wrote here this is 57 so that is the output uh, uh, channel and that frequency uh, band the power supply consists of a normal transformer and then a plug-in module for for the rest of this stuff have a look let me take this out and here we it's actually very very heavy and again it's full of all those tico stickers and here they test the power supply at different uh, voltages and test for ripple i guess millivolt cc and this one oh we got a date 87 so this unit is tested in 87 look at that so now we know how old this unit is so here's of course a bridge rectifier and some capacitors and then a big powerful 36 volts 0 to 4 amp wow that is nice and beautiful and a little output filter or something like that is this really good for four amps this inductor i don't know but this looks fairly safe to uh to power up so i think i will try and power this up and see if it uh how much power it takes look at that yeah i try to take away the screws here so we can have a little look let's have a little look inside some more of this stuff here so i removed the two lids here so we can have a nice look it looks like we got some smaller rooms in here with some filters and all that kind of stuff and look at that 
there is a 12 volt regulator here and a crystal oscillator we got some transistors that is mounted like that right and then there's a heating element maybe an ptc or something like that right on top of the crystal so that is a self regulated temperature yeah heater thingy and that capacitor is a little bit flat so that is weird why did that happen and the other unit here looks a lot different on that pcb right so it's a completely different pcb here we got some filters and it's the same here <clears throat> And again, a local oscillator that's probably multiplied a million times to generate the injections for the mixing up and mixing down and all that kind of stuff, right? And look at all those trimmer capacitors here, right? Normally, you only see them like this. I think this is uh, the first time I have seen, uh, seen them with this little top lid mounted. Look at that. So you can unscrew this. To get access to the screw and then there's a little teflon here on the top so it's gonna stay put that is so nice so we got those little toplets here how beautiful probably some test points sticking up here so we can see what's going on that's probably a good idea to measure the injection and adjust all this kind of stuff then we got um the power distribution down here is done in, in actually a quite a smart way, right? So we've got those mini banana connectors. So you can just pull out each of them and individually and then do some measurements. Everything is mounted on uh, connectors, so you can easily measure what is working and, uh, and what not. We've got uh, power amplifiers and all sorts of stuff here. Look, some big, powerful transistors mounted in this one and that's also marked real nice with input and output so something they on something they write it in english and also here i don't know probably gonna see some dates as well here so i got this unit up and running and as you can see here i'm running attenuators on the input here and on the input here and still I'm able to overdrive the analyzer here. Oh man, I need to go and get another attenuator. This thing can definitely uh, deliver a lot of power. And uh, there is something with the frequencies, uh, they are not correct. It is definitely not the right channels as they say here. Uh, so that is a little bit funny. Uh, channel 57 should be 728 and this is the output it is 762 so that is a little bit uh, weird right also my input frequency uh, hang so on here's my frequency input 257 but it goes to a frequency doppler and then attenuator otherwise it's gonna go absolutely crazy here and uh so 257 in a doppler is 514 on the input and of course i checked with the spectrum analyzer that is correct so that is not what it says here the channel should be 26 so that is a little bit funny but you can see this is the width of the recreated channel and uh, the input here is where i hit inside this band if I go and move my input frequency in a step of one megahertz see this is my input frequency and if I go see now I'm dead now I'm outside of the band and then I go in here and then within a little while it should no it don't it did that before there's some sort of a an automatic level adjustments that kind of amplify this let me show you if I give it a little bit more. It should, yes, here we go. Now it's back. So now we got all the gain that we wanted. And then there is a gain regulation uh, for this uh, channel. So, uh, I mean, I really think this works. I just found a 
big nasty power attenuator so of course I can give this a little bit more and here we go now I can't see this uh, the noise from this uh, the channel but I can definitely uh, show you that I can drive it to look at that hammer hammer so and that I think I got like 42 dB of uh, external attenuation and I got minus uh, 4 here so but it's actually not all that bad but anyway yes this thing is definitely uh, working I think we should try and have a look a little deeper into all those things I just did one more measurement before we're gonna go and look inside the modules the IF is 36 megahertz so I'm looking now at the IF output of the first converter so here we go that is 36 and let's uh, try and change the input frequency again a little bit and then see that is one megahertz up and then it goes down and then whoops it's gone so it's definitely a very good and sharp filter and then gone again yeah very sharp filter on the IF and uh, on the converter and of course that is uh, needed for this uh, channelizer to work power consumption is 81 watts and uh, this converter is not running warm or anything no not at all how about yeah okay that one is running definitely so that will be the big bad power so power amplifier I guess so this is the input converter module it consists of two modules and this is the main entry and it goes through here so I guess this is just a filter and there's probably not a lot more and then it goes out again right so a sort of a pre-filter of some sort but I think we should try and go in here and have a look as well it's definitely very different from the down converter because I know this is a down converter because we need an oscillator right so now we're inside this uh, first entry box here and this is where our TV channel goes in and look at that there's a an inductive coupling to the first resonator and then there's a tiny little pickup down here and that is of course not to load this resonator here and then there's a direct connection to the next resonator and then again the same kind of pickup new resonator and then a pickup inductive pickup just like this one right and then we go in a, a cable and there is a some sort of a thick film circuit uh, here I actually I'm gonna crank this open because I can't use this for anything at all the way that it is anyway but I think I'm gonna reuse this box because uh, no not that one but I think one of the other boxes are nice and clean and I want to reuse this for one of my own projects so and I also like the BNC connectors like this and you can move the different slots or the different walls here you can see this is a kind of very reusable box all you have to do is take your solder soldering iron and just move these so it's a very configurable uh, box and ha ha it says 26 here so this is probably a front end filter of some sort but there's also a dc voltage going into that one so maybe that is some gain but definitely i want to see if i can get this out yeah look at that ceramic substrate amplifier three stage amplifier and all that kind of stuff really really beautiful <laughs> it's a little bit difficult to desolder of course but yeah yeah and then the rest here is just normal stuff there's actually one extra stage here but i think what they're doing is 
one of those wires, I think it was that one, right? So maybe that one went in here. So that is probably for controlling the output uh, gain or level or something like that, right? Okay. Yeah, did I mention about those super, super wide resonators here? This is actually an inductor and this is a capacitor, right? But the reason why it is so wide, that is because they want this to have a very, very high Q factor. So super, super low loss. Beautiful. So here's the down converter. So that one is, of course, the RF input, the high frequency input. And then again, it's the same super nice uh, filter. Filter, And here is the mixer. And they make this mixer more or less by hand. So this is a double balanced uh, diode mixer. You see this little ring of diodes. You see the two transformers. And then injection is coming from all those filters. And you see a little transistor in here and a little transistor in here. So that's actually doublers or triplers or stuff like that. And here is the crystal oscillator. This is the back side of the crystal and this heater regulator. Could be fun to try and power this up and see what happens here. But there's not a lot more to it than that, really. It is um, very much uh, handmade, and you can imagine doing those in production. It takes a whole day to make one of these, right? Look at that. A million little do this and do that, and then bend this up here, and oh, there's a wire here. That one goes to that one, and can you imagine the documentation must be in three dimensions, right? So how do you remember to, oh, this is doing this, and uh, you need to bend this, and I'm happy we don't manufacture electronics like this anymore, because that is a pain. Yeah, but that is definitely nice. So the, the IF goes out here, and here is a IFP20. So this actually means 20 dB gain in the frequency range. It is written here, 18 to 90. So that is the frequency range. You got 20 dB gain block, easy, easy. You just plug in one of these and then you're good to go. And then your IF goes via this filter. So this is, I don't know if it's a crystal filter or a resonance filter or something like that. So this is your channel filter. And you also always see really nice and sexy filters like this in a channelizer. And then, of course, you have correct uh, input impedance matched input outputs and all that. And then a little output amplifier. And here we go. So, yeah, that's what there is to say about this uh, channelizer. So now I'm still in the po pokers here. <laughs> <laughs> We're taking down this thing. We got tons of screws and tons of this and tons of that. But let's have a little look here. We got two modules connected in, out, in, out like that, right? And then this output went here and we got this box connected to the main output. Well, that does not look like an amplifier. So it's probably a low pass filter, a power detector power regulator or something like that, right? And that is definitely the power amplifier. Because we got two big bad transistors like that. But I don't understand why it's made this way, really. Because there is no thermal connection to the back plane here, right? So why do you want this one to to be able to get real warm? Why isn't this mounted on the back where you got big heat sinks? Or maybe this is just a pre-driver that is not getting real warm. And then here on the back, we got even more power 
amplifiers and stuff. I don't know. So I'm going to take out, take those out as well, and then we're going to have a look. <laughs> this is quite nice with this sock. So let's try and look inside this module first. Oh, there's a little trimmer here. Interesting. Okay, that was super easy. Now I know exactly what that is. This is a power coupler uh, on SVR meter. Uh, it's also made on ceramic substrate. So it's really nice, actually. I think this is definitely worth uh, saving and playing with for some other projects. Because this is a reusable part, but it's a little bit corroded and all that kind of stuff. But I think it's nice and clean here on the inside. What you see here is a feed through track on the two main ports. And then we see two tracks, so two couplers. And we've got some load resistance on one end and a capacitor. This is for alignment of the reverse forward directions. And then it goes via a little diode detection, amplification, and a little op amp. And see, it's also doing the same with the other one. So the thing is, it's probably alarming if there's a lot of reverse or something like that, right? So this is more or less what it's doing to, to automatically turn off the power stages. So that means this uh, unit can run on an open output. So that's quite cute. What do you think about this way to solder to the metal? This way this one can bend a little bit if I push it like that. And that was not possible if they just soldered all that. It's probably also very difficult to, to do that because of that part. And so this is probably good enough. So I think this is one of the power amplifiers. That's quite nice. I would expect this to be probably wide band and probably possible to use for all sorts of other things. So let's see what's inside that one. So this is the inside of the power amplifier. Uh, this is actually a narrow band high frequency uh, match as I can see here. But let me show you how this works. There's actually a few little details in this one that's not that normal. So this is of course DC and that will be the RF input. So this is of course for input match and all that. So that will be the base of this NPN transistor. So here's our DC filtration. And here, a little resistor and another resistor, right? So this is a bias. So we pre-bias the base. And then there's a resistor and a capacitor from the output to the input. So this is a local feedback. So this is to kill uh, gain, uh, to kill RF gain. And um, there's another funny thing here. Look at that. Two capacitors here on the emitters to ground and then two resistors to ground. And that is DC feedback. That is not normal. This is very, very special. Normally you put those two emitters directly to ground. And then you don't care about uh, DC bias drift and all that. So this is what you see here is the collector inductor. So if you want to make this uh, power stage work at lower frequencies, you need to add an inductor here and then retrim everything, of course, but because this is what makes it work at a very high frequency. And then it goes again to the last one and it's the same. This is just, uh, just a little bit more output power type. And that will be the output match, a little inductor here for the output match. It's actually really nicely built. Quite beautiful. I think this is definitely reusable and 
it's possible to uh, modify this for all sorts of bands by playing with the different values here. So I think this is a keeper. Also, I like the the screws here for mounting. And you just put this on here, and then you can mount this, and then you're good to go. This is one of those standard cases as well. So, so in the center section, the kind of the generator part of it, we've got another module we haven't seen before. So, let me try and open that one. That is actually a very special unit, right? Got some amplifiers, filters, and that is of course one of those gain units. Then we go to the output, and here is just an attenuator between those two SMA connectors. So that is of course an optional where you can reroute the SMA connectors, and they this one was like that, right? And then this connector was like that. Or was it like that? I can't remember. But anyway, we just rerouted via this built-in attenuator instead of plugging in one of those more, much more expensive SMA type of attenuators. So, so that is how it's done. And again, SMA connectors and SMA cables, super reusable, and even those with SMA BNC also super reusable definitely a uh, good keeper parts here and this one can go in the in your front or back or something and then this can click in i mean yeah there's a lot of goody goody parts in this one uh, just remove this cooling aluminium plate so now we can see this om323 power module and it's super super easy to reuse just an input and an output and a an DC supply and a uh, obviously a heatsink in there. We got a little preamp here, so it's definitely going for some mean power here. But I don't see any real nasty, nasty filters. Oh, we got a little trimmer here. Power level. Ah, look at that. And a little diode here. So, yeah, here we can measure. On, on this test point, we can just easily DC measure what is the power level. Quite nice. Yep, there's one more here. And this is, of course, for the higher frequency band. So those are straight. A couple of like this. Look at that, it's just pure plumbing. And then this substrate ceramic substrate uh, gain block. Oh, there's actually another one, a little extra. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, you're probably going to hate that guy who figured out, oh, we need to do this. Oh, look at that. So there's a little inductor here on the top and then, wow, wow, nasty, nasty. And a little, yeah, a test point for that. <laughs> oh, I just love it. Yeah, I think that will be the last two boxes I can show you. That will probably be two more power amplifiers, right? Some resistors there. If I look here, this tells me there's a power transistor in here somewhere. Well, that is a really beautiful box. That is definitely some really beautiful power amplifiers and they're absolutely possible to reconfigure and to reuse for all sorts of other experiments. Nice SMA connectors and all that kind of stuff. So here's a power supply entry and then there is this resistor. The fun thing is the DC input goes to this bias adjustment and then this bias controlling transistor and this controls the the base obviously right but then power entry via this resistor goes 
to that track, supply this transistor, and then it goes all the way to the collector power. So that means this resistor is actually a current limiter that prevents this one from going absolutely berserk. Or if something blows up here, it will just blow away the resistor, right? And this big solid piece of aluminium. Definitely nice design. Very simple with this piece of metal, screw it in onto the side, and then you have a case. Yeah, not bad at all. Those are really nice keeper items. Anyway, yeah, we scored a lot of cool things today. Let's play a little bit with this crystal heater. So yes, this def device is definitely a temperature regulated uh, heater. See what it's doing. Oh, let me turn off some of this annoying light here and put on the macro. This way we can make a nice picture here. 61. See, I painted the top black so you can get a better thermal. And it's using about one watt. To have this uh, crystal nice and warm. Oh yeah, you see reflections here in all the shiny parts. And this is definitely what you need to be aware of when you're playing with the thermal. But see now it's not affecting the black part that I painted. Because that is just super good when you do that. And the regulator is not that warm because I... I'm only giving it 16 volts because I didn't want to add a lot of heat here. I think they're running off 36 volts, so <laughs> that is a little bit um, hmm, warm, right? But I think maybe this regulator here is also doing its job about, you know, heating up all the other parts in this oscillator just to make it uh, nice and stable. So that is the the crystal heater, but, oops, let me show you here on the back, PGH, PG, so this is a Moata crystal heater pod, what a good score, I definitely score these two and save those for a good day. I found a problem in the copper, I was actually trying to see if I could use it the way that it is. But I realized that what they're doing here is they got two resistors and two tr uh, trimmer capacitors in one end here. And then the other side they take out to some amplifier and stuff, right? So what this is, it's not an SPR bridge, but it's only a power meter in two different frequencies or two different ranges. And the reason why I know that is because when I open this one up, of course, there is a ground on both sides, so it's nicely shielded and all that kind of goody-goody. But as you can see here, the center here is the RF track. And if you take out on one side, it's both going to be forward or reflected. If you want to have forward and reflected, you need to take out here and here or here and here, right? So that is why I know. It's not an SBR bridge, the way that it is, only a power meter. Huh, <laughs> funny, funny. And the different length is, of course, for different frequency ranges, or different uh, coupling, obviously, right? But that is what there is about the SBR bridge as well. But now it can actually be reused as an SBR bridge by terminating this one and that one, and then using these two. Then you got forward and reverse, but it's a little bit annoying it's not the same coupling. Ay. Yeah. Well, well.